Today, my topic is on infertility, and I have with me a fertility doctor. Infertility is such a big thing. Not being able to um, have a child is something that should be, or being able to have a child is something that should be natural. I mean, it is just natural. So when something unnatural is happening to you, it can be very it can be very painful. We are in a society that puts a lot of pressure on people to have children, you know, but my show today really is not to wallow in self-pity um, of having a child or not having a child. It is to encourage yourself and to remind you again that, you know, children do come from God. You did not commit anything. You didn't do anything. No, it is not because of that abortion that God now is punishing you for not having a child. No, it is not because... I, that that person cur cursed you or this or that. No, no. There are many reasons why people cannot conceive. And believe it or not, there are unexplained reasons that even the doctor cannot explain. Your, like your body just cannot have a child, you know. But I will encourage you to keep trying. I would encourage you to seek different ways to have this child. But be working on yourself and be putting all your priority on the things that you have in your hand. You have your husband, you have your wife in your hand. You have your family in your hand. You have your job in your hand. You have your life in your hand. Focus on those things rather than focusing on having a child. Create contentment within yourself and the things that make you happy. Focus on those things. Don't pressurize yourself. Don't make anybody push you to go to Babalao. Don't make anybody push you to do something that is completely out of, out of your beliefs. That is completely out of, don't allow that happen. Be happy. Thank God and actually see like the benefits of not having a child now. As for me, I always make a joke that because I travel a lot, I will just cuckoo be carrying the child everywhere that I'm going. Until God gives me that child, I am going to enjoy the silence in my home or I will enjoy that there is no baby crying or pooping everywhere. I will enjoy that because when the child comes, I will be wiping poop. I will be cleaning diapers and I do not mind. I will be in that chapter of my life and I will be happy. But for now, I am also happy at where I am. I choose to see that I can get to spend more time with my husband. I choose to see that I can take vacations. I choose to see that money is being spent on only me and my husband, not on me and four other children, paying tuition and everything. Do you understand? Now, to you, like, that may seem like it is a selfish type of mentality. Oh, okay, now, so then what do you expect me to do? I should sit down here and manufacture a child or clone a child. I can't do that. So since I cannot do that, I have decided to focus on my goals. And you know what? I am such a happy person now. About two, three years ago, like, that weight of infertility was on me. I mean, it was really, really on me. Yes, I would still go to baby ceremonies. I would still congratulate my friends and everything. But, but deep down on the inside of me, I was so sad and I was so pained. But that's not me anymore. We have a fertility doctor with us today. He is very, very well skilled, learned, and... um. He is one of the finest fertility doctors in the country, and he would get to um, tell you more, and you would learn, and I'm sure that you would be satisfied. Stay tuned. I am with my guest, Dr. Maxwell. He is here today to talk to us on infertility infertility on the mind and how it affects your psyche how it affects your body and of course how it affects the relationship and the marriage thank you so much for being here today sir thank you for having me thank you thank you so much doctor so yeah. i've heard so much about you and i know that you're very um vast and competent in your field um this is a society where having a child is a must mm -hmm. whether it is given to you by god hook or crook mm -hmm. <laughs> you must you must have a child and so what happens when we find ourselves in a dilemma where our nature cannot give us a child or our nature is not giving us a child because in my case i am in my eighth year of marriage and we have tried to have children 
and it has become very very obvious it's not that we didn't know this before but of course with constant trying yeah. ivfs and iuis and all of that we've mm. been there done that we have found out that true true it is only god who, it is only god that can give a child so can you please enlighten us um about <laughs> about our journey of the worry the the agitation the fears the complexity both from in-laws from the society the pressures and all of that and even the god factor if i may can you enlighten us about this whole field about infertility um infertility is is coach as far as i'm concerned in this country unfortunately um people don't put too much emphasis on those that are struggling with infertility especially when we say the population is more than 200 million then why would you bother about those <laughs> that don't have yeah forgetting that those that don't have deserve to have in fact psychological problems would come in whether you like it or not and there are myriad of them from frustration to anger to anxiety to shock to grief loss of confidence loss of self-esteem esteem mm -hmm. at a point you you lose control of you feel that your destiny depends on you having a child yes, and, and yes. africa because of the pressure can be so much so everything you do at a particular point in time is to making sure that you have at least one child. The problems are not even, you see, have more problems, like relationship <laughs> problems with your spouse or partner. There is so much more. Then when you now come to in-laws, friends. Finances. Yes, friends will come in. <laughs> there is an adage in Bini language that says that even an impotent man will come and be advising a couple that is trying to have children ah. you understand so you see friends will come they will come with very well-meaning pieces of advice but most of the time they are ill-conceived you know they are not the right thing so you may even take such decisions because you feel that they are doing it out of concern you know, yeah okay. concern but they are not the right decision so the problems are many infertile couples are more likely to interact socially with couples that are maybe a couple the wife is pregnant or mm. naming ceremonies mm. birthdays there's that tendency for you to withdraw to recruit uh -huh, to stay away and it has also been found that they are also very likely to suffer um, some forms of depression in fact, it has been said that those that are infertile, that have a history of depression, are more likely to suffer depression if the infertility problem is not solved. Then infertility also, the, the treatment itself can be... <laughs> can be mind-boggling. Can be mind-boggling. <laughs> you know, apart from the fact that you can have some medication side effects in some people, then the money worries, infertility treatment is not cheap. Mm -mm. So some people really, that really worries them a lot, having to get the money available to, to, to go ahead with the treatment. You know, it can be a serious problem for many people. Lack of sleep, like I mentioned earlier, marital conflicts. It's so much, it's so, so much. It's really a problem. We have to also address that part. And I must also say at this point that the truth is this. 50% of those seeking infertility treatment will not get it. Hmm. If you have 100 people doing IVF, at the end of 10 years or 15 years, only 50 will, get, will succeed. What it simply means is that IVF is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you like? And medicine is still growing. It's still growing. So at least you, can, you, you have 50 out of 100. That's some feet before now. You can't even get anything. So, but you see, you have to continue to try. The older you get, 
the less your chances. So if you need to get assisted conception done, you should start early so that your chances are better. How do you feel when when the IVF takes? You know, when after that two weeks and then you, oh, you are pregnant. How does that make you feel? It's a wonderful feeling, I must say. <laughs> you know, we are more like, okay, we are there to divulge any information, whether it's good or it's bad. When it's good, everybody is happy, <laughs> and we celebrate it when it's good. Then when it's not good as well, it's not a very good feeling. You just have to bring out all your counseling skills, try to tell the couple that, okay, it's not the end of the world. You can still have a shot at it. It doesn't mean that you can't have a baby. You know, because the success rate for IVF is cumulative. If there is a fail, if there is a treatment failure, the chances of a second mm. cycle succeeding is higher. That's how it works. Okay, so but if there's a failure the first time, then the, then the chances of the second one is... Is higher. Okay, yes. so it's something that has to be consistent. It's, yes, it's cumulative. But the problems that we have here are money problems. Mm -hmm. Probably someone saved maybe your life savings, sold a plot of land or something, or borrowed money mm. to even do a first cycle. Mm. And hoping fervently that it will work. That it will take. Then if it doesn't now work, it's like you are back to square one. You have to pay back you all your debts <laughs> before you now start looking for money to do uh. another cycle. So it's not as easy as is being portrayed out there, but you should be very hopeful and positive. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see your doctor, your doctor will probably tell you, okay, these are your chances. Uh, the, the, the age is the single most important factor when you're going to use your own eggs. So you will put everything on the table, the chances that you have, because some clients will come and say, ah, doctor, what's the success rate? I think success rate should be individualized. You shouldn't just lump it because someone at 49 will not have the same success rate with someone that is 40 or 39. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I usually tell my clients when they come with that question. So until you come, we look at it holistically and ask, okay, these are your chances based on your age, if you had had surgeries in the past, like fibroid operations, mm. then there are some other things. Even spend parameters also may contribute in a way. So we put everything together and it's okay, this is, this is, these are the chances of you getting. So you just use that word there, you know, which is sperm. Yeah. <clears throat> so I do know this, but I want you to yeah. let them know. Is every sperm loaded? <laughs> do people shoot blanks of course people shoot blanks people shoot blanks not every sperm is loaded <laughs> just as not all fingers are equal <laughs> just as you have billionaires you have millionaires you have thousand years mm -hmm. and you have people that are living below the poverty line likewise sperm parameters the distribution equality it's not the same for everyone. So that means that the issue is not always a woman. Most definitely. In fact, the causes of infertility is split into two. 40% for the man, another 40 for the woman. Then the remaining 20% is, is unknown yeah. and a, the combination of the male and female. Okay. But in this part of the world, we'll keep on harping on it that it is not only the woman that is responsible whenever there are fertility problems. In fact, most men have also been the reason why some women are not getting pregnant. But if he says you are not going to the hospital, it remains so until he decides to go until to the hospital. Until something is done, something about, is done it. about it. And unfortunately, I've seen situations where the couple now come very late when the man is already tired. Maybe after like 10, 15 years of marriage, the woman mm. is already, you know, advanced in age. So it now becomes a problem. In terms of now, you are now trying to treat the woman as well as the man. So, wow. for us, I would say, when you notice that nothing is happening, especially after one year of trying, it is very, very important for you to see your doctor. It must not necessarily be IVF, but there will be some form of evaluation that will now determine whether 
IVF will be done or not. If there's no need for IVF, your doctor should not say you should go for IVF. There are, there are medications that can be taken at least to tweak and help in some areas and see whether pregnancy can occur. Okay. So what are the types of fertility treatments? I know there's IUI, I know there's IVF. Mm -hmm. um, what are the different kinds? Because there are so many out there. Yeah, um, fertility treatments. You know, when a couple comes and there are fertility problems, it's not IVF that comes to mind the first time. You because the whole world seems to think that it's just IVF. No, no. You come, <laughs> sometimes you may not even need any form of treatment. It may be just timed intercourse. Maybe they are not timing the intercourse properly. That is why the pregnancy mm. is not coming. Yeah, because like speaking of timing, like it, like it's not every woman that's every twenty-eight days. So some doctors may need to help you. Yes. Count. And some in some cases you might have sojourning husbands that are not always on ground. Mm. Some maybe offshore workers two weeks in, two weeks out. So for one reason or the other, the timing is not always right. Mm. So in some situations, you need to probably say, okay, this is what is going to happen. If <laughs> you can't meet him, he should come to meet you. You know, okay. the other way around. You don't I have to wait for him today, to come. Not today. Yes, even if you have to travel <laughs> to Portacot or Lagos to go and. Make sure that it happens. You have to also consider that. So that one may not probably you may not need any drugs. Then some situation maybe when you do hormonal profile, I know that there are some derangements. You may need to give certain medications to help to balance the hormones, and that may just all you need mm. for something to happen. You know, it's a stepwise approach. So it depends on what you are doing. So from time to time, if this doesn't work, you move to the next level. If I ask, okay, madam, or if you notice that the sperm parameters are very, very low, some medications... Meaning the sperm count? Yes. Okay. Count and motility, especially. There are some medications and supplements in the market that can be prescribed over a three to six month period to see if the parameters can get better. If not, in some cases, it can get better. If not, you may not consider assisted conception at that point, mm. even if the wife is okay. What is your take on surrogacy? Uh, because I know people who literally hide. They will go to a country, they will stay away for nine months or one year, and then they will come back to Nigeria and have the audacity to do all and bear um, without really saying exactly what happened, which I think people should should be able to say that because God provided a a conduit, yeah. a medium. Mm. And that medium should be celebrated, of course, not publicly because that too could have some, some legal glitches. But don't just come out there and just make it look like you're 60 years old and then God just gave you triplets. You know, like, 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 like what do you think about surrogacy in this country? And is it something that we should not be ashamed to talk about because if I should ever do that, I wouldn't be ashamed to talk about it. Yeah, but, you know, the country needs to get uh, sophisticated socially to the extent that people can easily come out and say such things. Just like rape victims, HIV, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like that. It's not always easy because of the stigma attached. Even for IVF, I know a lot of couples that will not want even their neighbor to know that they did IVF mm -hmm. for the same reason. Mm -hmm. Because I've heard a lot of things memes about IVF, ah, the babies are not strong, normal. they are not strong, you know, they are not natural, and all that. And we, yes, we've been dispelling <laughs> those myths on a regular basis. Once there's a pregnancy, it's like any other pregnancy. But you see, people will still hear uh, pieces of information from other sources, and they'll probably live with that, and use that to taunt whoever mm. that they know that you know that went through that so likewise surrogacy may be a problem for people to come out at this time maybe with time we will grow into it and I hope over so. time I really hope so. and you know so it's a good thing to do oh and bear mm -hmm. because yeah. the truth is that it is god that still gives children to completely take charge of the testimony making everyone think that this all happened all naturally and it's such a no, miracle. No, I don't think that's the reason. I think it's so just people about people that. are <laughs> just happy with you. Actually, people that have seen you go through a lot before then and now 
God has blessed you with kids. So I guess no, like no one is paying attention to the details. But I guess, yeah. I'm sure friends and uh, close friends we know okay. the, the 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 real truth. But I think they are not even thinking about it. They are thinking about the fact the that blessing. now you have kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're okay. You, you understand? Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, that is just the whole essence. I get it. Because that really helps psychologically. You have all the money and nothing is coming in that direction. And God blesses you through someone else. Why not? So, so, as we wrap up, what would be the one advice that you would give to people who are struggling with infertility? It's a very difficult piece of advice, but infertility is not what we pray for even your enemy to go through. Unfortunately, some people will have to go through it. You do the best you can, see a doctor, see your options, and um, hope for the very best. It's not an easy thing to go through, but... And what if you never have a child? Well, if you don't, if you cannot, if you don't have control over it, what can you do? Can you probably you? have to live with it. Okay. Especially if there are no options. What are you. some options? Apart adoption. from surrogacy, adoption. Even adoption is not cheap. Yeah. Legal adoption mm -hmm. is not mm -hmm. cheap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not cheap. So you just have to you, live with it and you live with yeah, it. hope for the very best, you know, and live your life normally. The problem that people have is that they, they spend the whole of their lives pursuing that <laughs> venture. And at the end of the day, you may probably succeed, but you have spent so much time doing that without doing anything else. Sometimes 10 to 20 years looking for a child, you're already in your late 50s and 60s, and you just realize that there's no time. There's no time. You can't do anything else. Okay, okay, the baby is here now. So what next? You know? I know, right? Yeah. I know. I know. So just keep that at the back of your mind. Even though you may have such uh, struggles, you should also, whatever life goals you have, you should continue pursuing them alongside. 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 Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. jump off a cliff just knowing that you will not crash. Let me tell you, everybody has their baggage and everybody has their demon. So you might as well deal with your own demon and everything will work out fine. <laughs> if you're not in control of your emotions, your emotions will be in control of you.